Guys, trophy list review number 35. And today we have a Halloween special. Today we have got Mr. Nobody 88, who I would say is a horror expert, judging by their amazing trophy list. So let's get into the PSM profiles page. No tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. It's good advice. So Mr. Nobody is at level 416. They've got 5,203 trophies in total, a whopping 120 platinums, 553 golds, 1,225 silvers, 3,305 bronze trophies. And as you can see, this is one of those very well looked after accounts. 122 games played, 121 completed games giving them a 99.29% completion rate, which will eventually be 100 because you'll see what game they're working on. Um, they're averaging 5.3 trophies a day. They've got over 2,600 views and they are ranking 93,276 in the world and just past 12,000 in the good old UK. So just above me, I'm about 12,300. So... Let's get some more stats for this trophy list. So 120 plats in total, 12 of which are ultra rares. So 10% of the platinums Mr. Nobody's got are ultra rares. That's 10% more than me. And then in terms of series, we have got four God of War platinums. We've got a Call of Duty platinum. We've got two from softwares. And then the standout statistic, which I mentioned yesterday in my community post, Mr. Nobody has got 12 Resident Evil Platinums. And just to be clear, that's not 12, that's not game stacking like the PS4 and PS5 version. That's 12 different Resident Evil games. Now, all in all, I don't know how many Platinums there are all together for Resident Evil, maybe 14 or 15, but these 12 are every single player game possible in Resident Evil, which is very, very impressive. I'm very excited for this trophy list review. As you know, I'm a big Resident Evil fan and I also want to get all the single player platinum. So let's get some inspiration. So let's go to the beginning of the account. So this account began in 2022. So just under two years ago, um, no, over two years ago. So it begins with Call of Duty Vanguard um, on the PS5 done in three days and 23 hours. A lot of these platinums are done very quick, by the way. That's another thing about Mr. Nobody. Gets awesome plats, great completion percentage, and does them very, very quick. Um, I never played Vanguard, actually. Um, in fact, only until about... A week ago, I hadn't bought a Call of Duty game in years, and I've just got Black Ops 6, and I'm quite excited by getting the Platinum in that, so I've got more love for Call of Duty Platinums now because I realize how hard they are. I knew how hard they were before, but now I know firsthand really how difficult they are, especially with multiplayer trophies. And then we've got God of War done in three days and ten hours, which is pretty quick. Um, great Platinum, great game. And then we've got our first horror orientated platinum, which is Until Dawn. Um, done in one day. And this takes quite a few playthroughs, so that is quite dedicated. Um, I'm not sure how many playthroughs in total. I think you need two in a bit, or maybe three. Um, or it can be done, I think, in one if you know what to do. But yeah, I presume you did it in two or three, all in one day, which is really impressive. And then... Resident Evil, the first one, the first Resident Evil Platinum on this list, done in two days, 20 hours. This is quite nuts because this game takes, I think, a minimum of five playthroughs. I think I did six. I always do more than I need to, but I think it takes about five or four if you're crazy. Um, so that is very impressive and a very difficult Platinum, I can tell you firsthand. Then we go on to Evil Dead on the PS5. Very nice. Resident Evil 4 on the PS4 is 100% completion. Very nice. I've still yet to play this, but I would like to. Um, 
Resident Evil 3 on the PS5 released uh, done in one month and one week. Yeah, this one takes a few playthroughs. Um, you have to beat it on the hardest difficulty. And I have to say the final boss on the hardest difficulty is a, li a little bit tricky, a bit more challenging than you'd expect. But um, of all the Resident Evils I've played, I think this is possibly my least favorite, but I haven't played six yet. So six is normally everyone's most hated, but it's a good game. I like it a lot. It's just not my favorite out of the ones I've played. Speaking of which, going straight into this, Resident Evil 2, done in a day and 22 hours. This is kind of nuts. Resident Evil 2 took me, I think, at least two weeks and five or six playthroughs. It's it's a tr it's one of those platinums that's kind of, it's difficult at first. I remember when I first started the game, I was like, I don't think I'll platinum this. This is quite tricky. The more you play it, you kind of grow into it. And I do like Platinums like that. Um, but yeah, it takes quite a few playthroughs. and Or even partial playthroughs if you're smart. And there's one where I think you have to complete the game by doing 14,000 or less steps. Which can be quite annoying. Um, but yeah, you must have... Surely you must have just stayed up for the entire uh, 44 hours to get this done. I'd love to know. And then we come on to two more rare Resident Evil Platinums. In fact, Re Revelations 2 is an ultra rare. I think Revelations used to be an ultra rare, or maybe it still is. I'm not sure, but I know Revelations 2 is definitely an ultra rare. Um, these are the two games that kind of got released in episode format. So there's about, I think, four or five episodes per game. Um, obviously, now you can just buy the game and have all the episodes ready. So you can play them back to back like a full game. But uh, Revelations 2 is pretty hard because you have to complete each episode um, with invisible enemies, which is also a trophy from Resident Evil 1, where you have to complete the game with invisible enemies, which is quite annoying. It's, it's not the most difficult, but it is annoying. I think in Revelations 2 it's even harder. You also have to do some kind of uh, run through the game where you have to get as many points as possible. I think you have to do speed runs and maybe loads of headshots and get as much points as possible per playthrough of each episode. So Revelations 2 is definitely on my list to do. Um, I haven't started it, I haven't even played it, but it's one that I really look forward to. It's got Claire and Barry from the games. And then we come on to Revelations, which has got Jill and Chris and was originally made, I believe, for the 3DS. It's pretty impressive for a 3DS game. And then it got ported to all the consoles. And this is done in four weeks and one day. And I can predict why this took longer than Revelations 2. Revelations 1 has a mode called Raid Mode, which is the Platinum Stopper, should we say. Um, basically, you have to go through... It's an extra mode, a bit like Mercenaries, where you go through the levels again and there's loads of different enemies in different spots and you have to get a really high score. And I think you can do a co-op. And I believe the last four or five levels are super hard. It's a real grind. Um, but it's a pretty good game. I've enjoyed what I've played of it so far. I think I'm about two episodes in. And then we've got Dying Light. Um, first person parkour melee game. I tried this. I just really couldn't get into it. Um, and... But I do, I do kind of respect it. It's, it's, it's got some good gameplay. I've seen some cool footage online of people playing this game. And they look really good when they're playing. But yeah, done over five months, three days. Obviously, all the DLC done as well, 100%. And then we come on to Resident Evil 5, 6, and 7, back to back. Um, yeah, 5 and 6 I still need to do. Um, with my Resident Evil journey... It's annoying because I've kind of played like the best ones first. I've got six Resident Evil Platinums and they're all like, in my head, the best ones. And now I've kind of got the other ones to play, like um, six, for example. But five is with Chris set in Africa and originally on the PS3. And five is a good example of kind of... Five is in between the original classic Resident Evil 1 and the new the new later ones because 
you can't move and shoot. So you have to stand still and shoot. So it's still got kind of like modern movement and controls, but you've still got the whole stopping and shooting kind of thing, which takes some getting used to. The controls are also really weird. They've picked really different buttons to do certain things. So it's a weird one. Um, you have to get all the collectibles, which can be a bit tricky from what I've seen. And you have to complete the game on the hardest difficulty, which I have seen is quite hard. You can do it co-op online or couch. But yeah, Resident Evil 5, I hope, is my next platinum because I really want to play it in terms of story. And then we come to what's seemingly regarded as the worst Resident Evil game by a lot of people's accounts. Resident Evil 6 is the last Resident Evil they made before they kind of softly rebooted the series. Um, it's quite big and ambitious. I think there's four different stories that you can play and they're all uh, different characters. So there's like a Leon segment, Chris segment, Ada segment, and I think there's a new guy called Jake. Um... But it doesn't look too bad. I think one of the biggest criticisms is the QTE, but I don't think um, both 5 and 6 don't have like mercenary trophies or an extra mode. It's just a case of finish the game, get all collectibles, upgrade your guns, and do the hardest difficulty, which I think is called professional. So yeah, very nice to see um, between July and September, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7... Resident Evil Platinums in seven months, in um, four months is crazy, crazy. And then we got Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, which was a soft reboot. And my first Resident Evil Platinum, um, three playthroughs. You have to play, um, you have to do one run, I think a speed run. You can't heal more than three times. And possibly knife only, if I remember correctly. Um, I think so. And then you have to play on the hardest mode. The thing I liked about this game, with the hard difficulty, it wasn't like the game was the exact same and just the enemies were much more tougher. They actually changed things around in the game. They changed where key items are and they changed where enemies spawn. So actually playing the hardest difficulty became like a brand new kind of game in a way, um, which I really liked. Yeah, I highly recommend this. I'd also say this is probably so far for me the scariest Resident Evil game. Um, definitely gets under your skin. And then we've got Blair Witch. I don't see this often on people's trophy list. I've done this game. Um, this was the game that made me realize I need to upgrade my TV because the game is so dark. I had to really up the, the brightness and settings. It's a first person... I guess it's a walking simulator, you could say. Um, there's not really combat, if I remember well. But it's pretty good. It can get under your skin. It's, it's, a, it's a good game. But you might need a guide with collectibles because there's a lot of random bits. And you're, you're, it's set in a forest. It's very dark. And it can get difficult getting the collectibles. And then we come to a banger of a platinum. Um, a game I really want to try. Aliens Fire Team Elite. I've heard great things about this. This is a three-person game, co-op game. You can play with people online and you basically go through, I think it's about 11 or 12 missions. They're all quite hard and you have to beat the game on all of the difficulties, but separately they don't stack. So you keep escalating the difficulty and eventually you play on the most hardest. Um, you have to really coordinate with the team, I think. All three of you can take on different kind of setups and loadouts um, to get through the level. But this is definitely a game I would really like to do. But you need two dedicated people. Or three in total, obviously. But I'd need two more. But yeah, it looks really fun. Looks like one of the best um, alien games. Then we've got Dead Island Definitive Edition on the PS4. Very nice. Again, done really quickly. Gran Turismo 7 on the PS5. Nice, starting in a racing game there. Um, done over the course of seven months, chipped away at. Very, very nice to see. Resident Evil 0. Um, this again is in similar mold to Resident Evil 1. So it's like the tank controls will use a D-pad to move around and it's fixed camera angles, which you get used to. When I first played Resident Evil 1, 
um it was very tricky very difficult but you get used to it you you adapt to it um yeah this is one i do want to get around to it's one of those games where they keep ru saying rumors that there's going to be a remake which i'm not sure about if that's the case but we'll see then we've got Doom Eternal, done in five months, three days. Doom Eternal is pretty good, but it has a really annoying multiplayer grind. And it's... The multiplayer is okay. It's not fun enough for me to want to grind at it for like months on end. So I spent a lot of time trying to arrange boosting sessions. And it's annoying because you need three players for to start off a multiplayer match because it's like one versus two with some computer enemies thrown in. But yeah, it's it's a good it's a good platinum. I think it's my rarest platinum and it's a really good game, but just the multiplayer left a bit of a bit of, uh taste in my mouth. So just bear that in mind before you start platinuming this. Then we got Tormented Souls, which is very inspired by Resident Evil 1. It was on sale recently, really cheap, I think, for the Halloween sale. It might still be on today, I don't know, but it was really cheap. Um, it's one that I've considered. It's on my wish list, and I'm definitely going to have a think about doing this one. Then we got Ikai, um, a much shorter platinum, done in three hours, one minute. Very nice on the PS5. And then we've come to Resident Evil Village. Completed in seven months, three weeks, 100%. Uh, it's the only Resident Evil game I've platinum twice, actually, um, so far. Yeah, this is a banger of a game. This is so, so good. Again, it's similar to seven. You only need three playthroughs. Um, I think the second playthrough, the, the first one is a normal playthrough, get all collectibles, etc. Miscellaneous trophies. Second one is... Uh, I think speed run and knife only, and again heal less than three times. And then the third playthrough is Village of Shadows difficulty, which is the hardest difficulty, and it's pretty tough, I have to say. Um, if you don't have maxed out weapons, it's it's pretty tough. The enemies move a lot quicker; they hit harder. Um, the bosses take quite a while to take down, but yeah, it's it's tricky. The thing that makes this platinum a bit hard is mercenaries mode. They've got mercenaries mode with I think eight stages, and you have to S rank all of them. And if you don't have the DLC, it gets even harder. If you have the DLC, um, it can make it quite easy because you get to play with Chris, and he has better weapons and better skills and perks. So yeah, I have made a video on that if you're interested um, on my channel. Then we got Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I think the biggest Assassin's Creed Platinum, from my knowledge, 100 hours, 3 out of 10, a whole load of collectibles and miscellaneous trophies, quite a lot to do. Um, yeah, I do applaud people that do these long, long Platinums, regardless of difficulty. I think once a game goes past 70, 80 hours, it deserves to add a number on the difficulty, in my opinion, because it takes a lot of perseverance to get through a massive game and clearing the map, getting the collectibles, etc., side missions. Um, and then we come to Returnal, which I think is a... Personally, I think this is an underappreciated platinum. I think it's harder than 6 out of 10. So, for example, according to PSN, this is one score harder than village which is not the case and done six days 21 hours is crazy i played this game for about four or five days i think even one of my first ever live streams directly from the ps was returnal and i can't get past the first biome i can't get past the first boss but it's one of those games where rng plays a big part depends on what guns you unlock what guns you get but yeah, I think this is um I think it's an amazing game. It's really well made. The ambience, the music, the graphics, the style of game, the fact that each time you die the world resets into a random order. It's a very impressive game and a very very impressive platinum in my book. And then we've got the Demon Souls remake on the PS5, the first ever Souls game, rated 7 out of 10, 40 hours. I think this takes about possibly two playthroughs because of the um the mechanic I always forget about, uh, it's like 
the black and white thing. I can't remember. I thought I'd remember, but some of you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, you have to keep an eye on that. There's a lot of boss battles, quite a lot of miscellaneous trophies as well. And again, done really very quick. Mr. Nobody is not hanging around. Then on to the PS3, we've got Darkness 2, a game I don't think I've seen on a trophy list before, but very nicely done. Again, a two-day platinum done very quick. And then we've got two games I'm actually very interested in. Bioshock 1, which I played on the PS3, an absolutely great game, brilliant story, great setting. Done in three days, eight hours. That's another one you have to do on the hardest difficulty. Bioshock 2, three days, 10 hours again. Nearly the exact same amount of time. Um, the Bioshock trilogy is actually on sale right now on the PS store for like, I think seven, eight pounds. It's like down from 50. It's a really good deal. So I've got it on my wish list and I'm really considering it because I'd love to play these games and try and get the platinum in them. So very nice to see these two on your list. Really good stories. Then we go Goosebumps, the game. Um, nice short platinum done there on the PS4 in three hours. What Remains of Edith Finch, a very good narrative game, uh, first person walking simulator, really good game, I highly recommend this, um, nice short platinum, obviously you can do it in one day, but yes, yeah, really interesting story and setting, it's, it's, a, it's a very cool game, I like it a lot. Then we go on to Black Mirror on the PS4, nice, Deliver Us to Moon, I'm happy to see this, um, yeah, I don't see this game enough. I think it's a really good sci-fi game. I, I love sci-fi games and this one's quite straightforward. It's a puzzler, third person adventure, no combat. Um, a bit of driving on the moon, but it's, yeah, it's a pretty good game with a decent story. I really like it. And the sequel they made was Deliver Us Mars, um, which is definitely worth playing as well. Then we've got the medium, which is from, I believe they're called Bluber team, the guys that just worked on the remake for Silent Hill 2 and have announced their next game for next year, which looks really good. This was on PS Plus for ages and I kind of, I thought about it, I think I downloaded it once, but I just, it, it went off PS Plus and I didn't play it and it, it looked quite cool. I think there's two worlds that you jump between. You just press a button and you jump between both worlds and you use it to solve puzzles and progress the story. It looks pretty cool. It looks like a unique game. Um, I hope it comes back on PS Plus and I can try it out. Um, then we've got Vampire on the PS4. Again, done really quick. And then we've got two back-to-back -back bangers in the horror platinum game right here. The Evil Within 1. 9 out of 10, 50 hours, Evil Within 2, 8 out of 10, 45 hours, no problem for Mr. Nobody. These are serious Platinums, and you've done them very quick. So, these games have a Kumu difficulty, as it's called in the game, which is basically one-shot kill, so any enemy that just literally touches you, you die. And the game is quite difficult, with lots of, lots of tricky encounters, tricky enemies, boss battles, um so yeah in terms of maybe survival horror you could argue they're the hardest platinums to get in that genre possibly um yeah done really quick over the course of just one december two weeks in december in fact um yeah these games i definitely want to try this was made by uh, the fellow who made the first resident evil game and resident evil 4 so it's definitely one i really want to try out um, whether or not I can get the Platinum, I'm not sure. Uh, so well done to you, Mr. Nobody. Metro 2033 Redux, followed by Metro Last Light Redux. First person shooter, I think two playthroughs, because you have to do two different difficulty styles. I think it's got Ranger and Survival, I believe, in these games, which changes the way the game plays. Um, I think I own this one. I got it dirt cheap on a sale once, so... And I do own possibly Metro Exodus, I think it's called. So these are games I want to try for sure. Um, they look pretty cool and yeah, done really quickly. Remnant from the Ashes, 6 out of 10, 45 hours co-op. Done really, really quick. That's a tricky, tricky platinum. Um, and a really good game by all accounts. 
so yeah done really done really well with that one then we've got days gone i'm really impressed because you've got you've done the 100 percent days gone's got quite a lot of extra trophies i think i think you have to beat the game on the hardest difficulty in new game or new game plus i think then there's a hordes mode i think like a challenge mode we have to get high scores um yeah it's quite a tricky game as a, as a platinum itself yeah it's a four out of ten it's quite straightforward but i think for 100 percent it'd be a lot harder so yeah kudos to you done chipped away over nine months doing that well done on that dying light to stay human on the ps5 <coughs> excuse me done over 10 months yeah this is quite a long platinum um I think Platinum Vault did this. I've spoken to him a few times and he said, it's, yeah, it's quite long. I think there's a trophy for getting a certain amount of steps and it's a huge amount, like way more than you do in two playthroughs, which is just a nuts trophy. And then we've got Dead Space done in four months, six days. The remake. I love this game. Really enjoyed my time with it. Um, this is another one again, two playthroughs because... New Game Plus has its own set of collectibles, which you have to get to get a certain ending. So you have to do two playthroughs. You have to do the hardest difficulty. Um, and you have to do a playthrough using only the starting gun, which is basically, it's the plasma cutter. But it's like basically a pistol type gun, which is very doable. Very good game. Uh, check out my platinum review video that I made ages ago. It's one of my early videos. Um, for a few tips on kind of, um, I think there's some good, there's some good ways of increasing your money for getting upgrades, I think, because you have to upgrade all the weapons eventually, and there's a lot of upgrades. I'm so happy that I've seen a trophy list that has this game on it, because last year, I don't know if you guys remember, if you watch the channel regularly, a platinum like three or four really crap games this was one of them um this is like a resident evil wannabe it's a first person walking simulator puzzle game and it's like the design and decor it's very inspired by i think resident evil 7 and resident evil 1 so yeah it's, it's not like it's not shovelware it's not like a really bad game but it's just like a very short wannabe resident evil game that you can do in two three hours and I've never seen it on someone's trophy list, so I'm glad, Mr. Nobody. You and me have good taste. Then we got Man Eater, open world shark game, done in two days, nine hours. Then we got Phobia, Saint Dinfana Hotel, which is a kind of another Resident Evil wannabe, um, with a few cool gaming mechanics. I really looked into this one. I have considered getting this game um, to play it. But yeah, you're a journalist, I think, going to a hotel to investigate what's happened and you have a camera. And when you look for the viewfinder of the camera, the world changes around you so you can solve puzzles that way, which is pretty cool. Um, the gunplay looks a bit basic, though, but I think it's one that if it's really cheap physically, I might pick it up. Um, but yeah. Done in five days, three out three hours. Nice. Then we've got the Callisto Protocol. Um five out of ten, ten hours. Um just a reminder, guys, obviously, this time, this length of time includes all the DLC, the whole hundred percent. So Mr. Nobody probably got the platinum in this very quickly and then had to wait for the DLC. So yeah, Callisto Protocol is like from the maker of uh dead space and it's very similar to that it's a very short game and i think it's a pretty good game it has a very specific melee combat style which is really bizarre where you swing at an enemy and hit them then they swing back and you dodge and you wait it's really it's really weird it's built for really fighting one enemy so if you have three enemies swinging at you it can get a bit messy but it's got pretty good guns, really good graphics, and um, a very easy, fun platinum, like very quick. Um, well, I, I bought this game opening day and I platinumed it within 24 hours um, with no guides, just, yeah, just playing it. So I, I highly recommend it. I quite like it. I've got a soft spot for it. Um, and then we've got 
Zombie, which is an ultra rare. Don't see this quite often on trophy lists. Done over two and a half weeks, six out of 10, 24 hours. And then we got Daymare, 19, 8, 1998. Um, this is another Resident Evil. I won't say rip off, that's a bit harsh. A Resident Evil kind of wannabe. There's two of these games that they've made. Um, and it's very similar. You go to explore kind of laboratory type situation. You're part of a police force. Pistol, shotgun, I think a rifle as well. It's a game, I think if it comes up really cheap, I'm, I will get it because I do want to play it. Um, just because I like those third person survival horror action gun type games. 5 out of 10. 15 hours, quite short. Um, but yeah, and then we come on to the quarry which is on the ps5 done in the course of a week very nice very popular game werewolf the apocalypse earthblood this doesn't come up often this was on ps plus as well and i really considered this this is quite a cool game where as a main character you can morph into a werewolf immediately and like start fighting your enemies um the thing that put me off was it has no chapter select, so if you miss a collectible, you're playing the whole game again, which, you know, in the platinum business, that's just quite annoying, you know, that's very annoying. Um, I just don't think you should have to play a game again if you miss a collectible. I just think that's it's a bit annoying, but hey-ho. And then we've got the two Wolfensteins, uh, Wolfenstein The New Order, and then the prequel, The Old Blood, or prequel, sequel. New order is really good. I've also got that platinum done in two days. Another one you've got to complete on the hardest difficulty. Um, but obviously it's nothing compared to its official sequel, the new Colossus. It's nothing compared to that. Um, really good game. The old blood you did in a week and two days. I'm quite jealous. I've popped most of the trophies, but I'm struggling with those challenge maps. Old blood has, I don't know how old blood is regarded easier than new order because old blood has, 10 maps which are taken from basically 10 levels and you have to defeat loads of enemies and get a high score but to do it you have to like get non-stop headshots you have to be really good so yeah something i need to chip away at then we got prey on the ps4 nice lone survivor 6 out of 10 but 12 hours done in a day nine hours that's, that's definitely a game i'm going to look into and then for platinum number 50 i believe We've got the banger, the number one, the special, the best game of 2023. Should have been game of the year. Resident Evil 4 remake on the PS5. Um, I just think this game is outstanding. Really, absolutely outstanding. I love this game. I, I've played this. I've, I've sunk over 300 hours into this game somehow. And... It's actually, I've identified it as a bit of a problem. I've stopped playing it recently. I haven't deleted it from my console yet. I can't, I can't do that quite just yet, but I have stopped playing it recently, even as my little go-to game if I have half an hour free. I've just completely stopped playing it. Um, I'm going to platinum the PS4 version um, at some point, maybe for like a special platinum, like 150 or something. But yeah, this is a great game. Can be done in four playthroughs if you really know what you're doing and you're on top of it you can do this in four playthroughs but you're better off doing it in five or six yeah great game love it goosebumps dead of night on the ps4 we've got graveyard keeper 60 hour grind there and then we've got another absolute banger of a platinum alien isolation four out of ten that's i don't know if it's four out of ten I'd say that's a 5 out of 10. I'd, I'd give that 5 out of 10, not 4. 5 out of 10 minimum. I played this in the summer. There was a real big resurgence about this game in the summer. So basically, Alien Romulus, the film, was coming out. And then, coincidentally, I think I was... I'm a big fan of the first Alien film. I love Alien. Not a big fan of Aliens. That's a whole different debate. Um, and I was always aware of this game. And I heard good things about it. And I started playing it in the summer because it was on PS Plus and coincidentally it was being taken off. So I started at the right time. 
and then I think due to Alien Romulus, a lot of like streamers on YouTube were playing Alien Isolation, and then it started becoming a thing. And then IGN are very famous because 10 years ago they posted kind of a harsh review of this game, and it got really badly criticized. It's worth watching the video on YouTube if you have the time or reading the review. It's really funny reading people's comments because, yeah, the review just got absolutely slammed. So they re reviewed the game. And then about a month or two ago, the developer announced a sequel's on its way. So a lot happened with this game in the last six months, all starting off with that film, Alien Romulus. Um, I also didn't realize what a popular, highly rated Platinum this was until I think I posted on the community post and you guys were like, oh my God, crazy Platinum, amazing. Can't believe you did this. I'm too scared to get it. I can't finish it. I can't Platinum it. I didn't quite realize it was such a big Platinum. So... I kind of played it and finished it and thought to myself, yeah, it's a pretty good game, good platinum, but you guys gassed me up, so now I gas it up. So yeah, this is an amazing platinum. Alien Isolation takes... Can you complete in one playthrough? I can't remember if there's a speed run. I don't know why I can't remember. Um... Maybe there is a speed run trophy, I'm not sure. You have to beat the game on the hardest difficulty and you can you could try and follow a guide but the thing is the alien is unique ai so there's two or three scripted events in the game where the alien will come as part of the story and scare you whatever but all in all the alien will come and go whenever he wants so you could follow someone's guide but the alien might not be around their level or environment that you're at but with in your game the alien might be around so then you can't really follow a guide so this is a game where you have to just play it yourself and get good at it get good at using the tools you have to distract the alien or hurt the alien um i think as far as sci-fi games and horror games go it's brilliant i highly recommend playing this even if you don't want the platinum just play one playthrough because it's a great sci-fi game and it's a great horror game. It It's really, honestly, I was quite taken aback and quite shocked that I slept on this. It's a really good game. I'm so glad that I played it and I'm really glad that I platinumed it as well. Then we got Saw on the PS3. Nice. Don't see this one very often. Very nicely done. Bloodwash on the PS5. Nice. And then we got an Amnesia Trilogy. So Amnesia Collection done on the PS4 over 11 months, chipped away. Amnesia Rebirth done um, in four days. And then Amnesia, Amnesia The Bunker, which I think is the most recent one. I really should try one of these. This is my kind of genre of game that I'd like to do. So I might take the most recent one and maybe try that. But yeah, nicely done and finished all in October. A nice little... Um, Anesia session you had in that Halloween month. Very nice. Happy's Humble Burger Farm. Done on the PS4. Very nice. Done it in one long day. Um, on to a game that I really want to do. Again, one that I've accessed through PS Plus and it's probably going to go away soon. So I should really get to it. Evil West looks really fun and interesting. Can't really put my finger on it. What kind of game it's going to be like. But yeah, third person action adventure shooter linear uh you have to beat the game on the hardest difficulty i think you have to max out all your weapons so it's smart to just do two playthroughs you have to beat bosses a certain way um but yeah i, I really want to play it um and you've done it you did it really quick in three days so that gives me hope i think it's normally rated six out of ten on most guides you're killing floor two um done very quick for a 5 out of 10 20 hour game um very impressive zombie army trilogy zombie army 4 dead war nice work don't see that one quite often on the trophy lists then we got in sound mind um then yeah one i definitely don't see very often is the chant um i think i got this really cheap on sale and yeah i think there's no guides for it online and you don't really see it very often on trophy list so yeah very nicely done and done very very quickly 
80s, 50 hours, 6 out of 10, done in less than a week. Boom, very, very nice, great platinum. Speaking of which, another absolute banger of a platinum, Bloodborne, done in 5 days, 7 hours, 7 out of 10, 50 hours, 3 different endings, missable trophies, chalice dungeons, challenge dun no, chalice, chalice dungeons, so yeah, very, very nicely done. Um, a game I'd like to definitely again on my list of games I really want to play, but I keep putting off. Nun Massacre on the PS4. Then we got Metal Hellsinger. This is like Doom, but I think with music, and you've got to kill enemies to the sync, the sound or the beat of the music, which is a very, very cool uh concept. Done in half a day, lovely. Just ignore them on the PS4. Um, Proteus, Produce, Proteus. Let's go to Proteus. Don't see, I don't think I've seen this on a trophy list before um, on the ones I've reviewed. So yeah, um, done on the PS5 very quick. Nice. Yeah, it's one that we don't see often. We got Oxide Room 104 done in a day. Wolf Among Us done in two days. Very nice. Hopefully we get some news on the sequel soon. You only on the PS5. Alan Wake remastered on the PS5. Very nice. Did that in time for the sequel, I imagine. And then in January 2024, in one month, Last of Us remastered, which is, yeah, dedication, dude, because that is a big multiplayer grind. 60 hours, 6 out of 10. Got to play the game on the hardest difficulty. Um, very nicely done. Last of Us Part 2 remastered on the PS5. I forgot that came out this year. I completely forget that came out this year. I also platinumed it as well. Yeah, great game. One of the best ever PlayStation exclusive games, in my opinion. An absolute, yeah, great, great game. Really love it. Really love playing this. Then we've got Killer Frequency, 2 out of 10. 10 hours. A Plague Tale Innocence. Nice. A game that I've also got. Really enjoyed that. Enjoyed that story. Helldivers 2. Done in a week, nice, multiplayer, co-op, online, difficulty related trophies, loads of miscellaneous, so yeah, very, very well, nicely done on that. Um, and then a Plague Tale sequel, which is Requiem, done on the PS5. I want to eventually do this, but I think some of the trophies just kind of put me off, to be honest. But yeah, well done to doing it. I think redoing encounters in stealth mode or in combat mode and getting... Points for get play styles that kind of puts me off a little bit. Then we got Deadlight Director's Car on the PS4. Um, Platinums that we don't see very often. Quake One and Quake Two. Quake Two is very it's quite short. Um, six hours, two out of ten. I didn't realize it was that short. That'll be definitely one I'm going to add to my list. Um, Ghostbusters the video game, very nice. And then we plug in the PS3 and have a little God of War session. I like this. God of War trilogy done in 11 days. Nice. Very nice. God of War 1 PS3 done in 4 days. God of War 2 done in 2 days. And God of War 3 remastered done in 6 days on the PS4. Very nice. Nice work. And then another absolute Anger of a platinum back for blood nine out of ten hundred hours look at this done over two years dedication love it love seeing that it's a really hard platinum very difficult huge um time sink yeah brilliant brilliant great stuff and then we got cyberpunk 2077 i can't wait to play this Chipped away at it over two years and three weeks. Um, and obviously got the Phantom Liberty DLC done as well. Yeah. I'm really excited to play this one. I can't wait to play that. Ghost of Tsushima. Absolute classic. Um, great game. I'm a huge fan of it and love it. Um, and we've obviously got the sequel coming out next year, which I cannot wait for. And then for Platinum number 100 is yeah this is the platinum number 100 silent hill 2 hd which is 9 out of 10 30 hours 
one of the hardest survival horror platinums out there in the business. I think it's similar to the remake that I've just done. You have to do all the endings, but in this one, you have to do a 10 star run where I think you have to complete the game in 10 hours, but achieving 10 stars, like really playing it very well. So very, very difficult platinum. I don't know why then for Silent Hill 3, they went with a much calmer platinum. Maybe they had feedback or something. I don't know. So we've got Silent Hill 3. HD, Silent Hill Downpour on the PS3, done in a week. Um, Dave the Diver, I think that was on PS Plus, wasn't it, recently? Um, the Sinking Sea is one I have looked into, and again, not one that I see very often on trophy lists, but yeah, it's one that I have thought about. Serial Cleaner, Serial Cleaners on the PS5, nice. Pacific Drive, nicely done. Um, that came out fairly recently. And got pretty decent reviews. So yeah, nice to see that one on the trophy list reviews. Cannibal Abduction. Then we got Night at the Gates of Hell. Doom Nuke, Duke Nukem 3D 30th Anniversary World Tour. Nicely done on the PS4. Um, Three hours? I don't know, this is such a short platinum. Interesting, okay. Then we whipped out the Vita, which I really like to see. Got some Vita Platinums. We got back in 1995. Deathmark and the Walking Dead Telltale series. So nice. Got some Vita Platinums in there, which I love to see. I'm curious if you'll ever do Resident Evil Revelations 2 on the Vita. Because that, that is available on the Vita, but I don't think it plays very well. Dementium the Ward on the PS5. Dredge which people love. People love this game. I have not played it. I'm just not sure it appeals to me. But yeah, people really love this game. It's available right now on PS Plus Extra. We've got Corpse Party. Corpse Party Blood Drive. Blood Drive done on the Vita. Corpse Party done on the PS4. Nice 25-hour Vita game. Very nicely done in a week and six days. Then we've got arguably the hardest... Resident Evil Platinum, Code Veronica X, I don't know, possibly, I know you did this very recently because we were chatting about it in the Discord, but yeah, I think this is probably considered the hardest, Resident Evil is probably this in Revelations 1, right? 6 out of 10, 15 hours, I think it's more than a 6 out of 10 to be honest, but yeah, done really quick, like crazy quick, you have to do a lot in this game, it's quite a long Resident Evil game, got to do a few playthroughs, Got to do the extra modes as well. So yeah, very, very impressive. Really impressive. Um, Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare on the PS5. Nice. Done in two days. And then we've got the remake, which came out this year, I believe. I've got it as well, physically. Um, It's a game I definitely want to do. Alone in the Dark remake. This came out even before, the original came out before Resident Evil. People look at this as the kind of starting game for that genre so yeah done in six days nine hours this is a game i definitely look forward to doing soon then we've got remnant 2 nice chipped away at over 10 months and two weeks big platinum alan wake 2 which has now been 100 percented because you've done the lake house dlc i believe it's cool so yeah very nice dead island 2 just came out on the uh ps plus extra i'm considering doing it it's a nice like that you chipped away at it as well, did the sequel, very good. And then we come to the end and Silent Hill 2 Remake, which, remake, which I know we talked about a lot. Um, yeah, you're taking your time with this one. And yeah, I love this game. I um, haven't had the chance to make a video on it yet, but I do want to make some kind of video on this game. Maybe just sharing my thoughts. Um maybe some platinum tips but yeah it's Silent Hill 2 is a great game really really great game really got me thinking it's the kind of game five people can finish it you ask five people what they thought and you will get five different answers I kid you not it's it's a it's a mad game really really great game we come to the end of what I think is a very very awesome trophy list um Let's look at the trophy milestones. 
Call of Duty Vanguard, the Wear of Trains first trophy. Vanguard was the first platinum. The Survival Horror is the name of your 500th trophy. It's beautiful. It's perfect. Um, thousandth trophy is Murder Spree. Love it. Um, 20th platinum, Aliens Fire Team Elite. Massive. Um, Listo Protocols, the 40th. Demon Souls, the 30th. 2000th trophy, a record of disaster. 50th platinum. Boom, the big one. Then Bloodborne's the 75th. Very nice. Very nice um, platinums to pick. These numbers, these milestones. 100th platinum, Silent Hill, H Silent Hill 2 HD. Beautiful. Um, yeah, amazing, amazing stuff. So... Thank you, Mr. Nobody, for giving me your trophy list. And I think it is an amazing trophy list. There's a lot of games on here that I'm going to be researching into. Because as you know, I do love myself some horror games. So there's a lot that I didn't know much about that I'm going to look into. And maybe possibly play. And Platinum. But yeah, The Evil Within 1 and 2. Unbelievable. Um, uh, Aliens Fire Team Elite is... A crazy platinum to have. Very jealous of that. Back for Blood is a super one. Uh, the God of War trilogy. And obviously all 12 Resident Evils is just something else. Um, I mean, just look at this, guys. This is this is absolutely something else. Very, very impressive. Very, very jealous, but also very, very inspired. Um, so yeah, guys. Show Mr. Nobody 88 some love in the comments. Um, let them know what you think about their amazing trophy list. Ask any questions if you have. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for submitting your trophy list for me to review. There's many more that I have to get round to. Um, don't worry, you guys are all on the list. I'm going to chip away at them and get them out um, as soon as possible. Um, and if you're interested, please consider joining the Discord that I've set up. We've got a nice community of now over 40 people who arrange boosting sessions with each other, discuss platinums and trophies and tips and games, um, just have general nice chats about all things video games and Resident Evil and all kinds of things. So there's a link on my channel page. Consider um, joining that. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It helps more like-minded trophy hunters to see this video on YouTube and see this amazing trophy list and everyone else's. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and happy Halloween. See you on the next video. Take care.